nice filler cap. The quality feeling like there's a reassuring click there when you do that. Well, welcome back to the rainy UK, everyone. So I was hoping to start this introduction by saying that it was a lovely day and the rain had held off and etc, etc. Unfortunately, as you can see, we're quite unable to do that. So I'm just going to say that I'm getting soaking wet, but the video will be worth it. The video will be worth it. So I'm out today on a brand new motorcycle. So actually it's a brand new bike, but it's also a brand new model. So it's quite exciting. I'm out on the Moto Marini six and a half, or Sihi Mezzo, if you want to say it in Italian. That actually sound, made me sound quite smart, but I'm sure I botched the pronunciation wholeheartedly. So I'm sure someone will tell me in the comments if you've totally fluffed it. But I've been lucky enough actually to be lent this bike today by Midwest Moto, just outside the airport, and a really, really cool motorcycle dealership actually. They've got a whole range of heritage brands. Oh, there we go, the sun's out. Obviously BSA, uh, which is a real hot brand right now, uh, Motor Marini, Fantic, uh, Indian Motorcycle. So that is a really, really cool place to just go and visit and hang out, actually, uh, is, is Midwest. Um, but anyway, they've lent me this bike today, um, so thanks Midwest for that. And I'm just going to take it out for a little spin and just see what, how I get on. So the bike is basically uh, a, a sort of naked street bike, I think you can call it. It's a parallel twin underneath, a 649cc parallel twin. Now, my first bike was a parallel twin, uh, my first big bike, uh, after passing my test. It was a Kawasaki ER6, and the reason I'm mentioning that is that this actual lump is based on the ER6 engine. And for me, it's like going back on an old friend. Um, Getting back at an old friend, that sounded wrong, didn't it? Getting back on a, a trusty steed, it's really, really, oh, check speed. It's a really, really useful tractable lump. Tractable? Tra tractable lump. It's got that nice amount of torque, and I think we're at 55 newton meters, which is actually quite a lot for, for a bike in this category. Listen to that. Um, we got, I think, 61, 62 bhp. I'll check that though, because it was in kilowatts. I always get confused between kilowatts and, uh, and traditional brake horsepower. Um, but anyway, going back to it, parallel twin based on the Kawasaki ER6, and it's a really friendly and fun engine to ride. Uh, uh, any bike that has a 650 twin, it's worth it's worth checking out just on the basis um, of the engine. You know, I think the engines do make motorcycles. And if you're just using the bike mainly for street riding and you want that ability to just waft around uh, slow moving traffic, um, the ability to uh, pull away in multiple gears, you know, say you come up to a roundabout and, I mean, we've got a gear indicator on this, but some of the older bikes didn't have gear indicators, so you ended up coming up to a roundabout, especially if you're a newer rider as well and you don't know what gear you're in and just having that forgivingness in the engine. Uh, goes a long way, really. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lovely, lovely engine. I haven't even had a chance to wring its neck a little bit, but yeah, you can feel a wave of torque, um, which is really, really nice. Such a good thing to have on a road bike. So, yeah, as I mentioned, and we'll do a walk around later. Let's just slow down to come into Martley. It's, it's what we call a naked street bike. So it's the kind of bike that is easy to ride. Um, looks good, you can use it for anything really, you can use it for commuting, you can use it for Sunday rides, you could even potentially go on a mini tour with it um, because it's very comfortable, big old pillion seat as well. Wow, I'm actually surprised at how responsive the engine is. Something I'm going to do as well, while we're here and there's no one behind me, I'm just going to slow down as we're in the town, just drop it down into first and just see if there's any um, snatchiness on the throttle because oh it's not too bad actually there's, there's no one behind me so i'm just going to do this test there's not really any snatchiness which is a big deal because you do get that on quite a lot of bikes due to the uh, euro 5 emissions they have to run very lean and you're kind of either on or off but just pulling away that's a big deal actually to not have that to have a smooth pull away in first um i would if i was looking at any bike I definitely recommend 
when you're doing the test, just slow it down into first gear and just feel what it's like as, as, a, as a slow control. Um, because most of the time you're not going to be wringing the bike's neck. And that kind of slow control, maneuvering, um, doing like turns in the roads, turning into junctions like down there, that kind of thing actually is, is more important than you think. So I'm really uh, glad to see that the uh, six and a half kind of passed that test. Well, obviously I'm going to be a big fan of the lump. Um, I can't really open it up now because we're still in the 40. As far as these Sunday bimbles, these kind of lanes and little villages, it's performing really, really well. Now I've got a certain firmness to the suspension, but it's, there's no jarring. Or, see those bumps? Going, I'm going over a rough tarmac here. There's, a, there's a, a nice sort of like cushion between you and the harshness of the road. I don't know whether it's the seat, which feels very well padded. I'm just putting my thumb on it now. It's kind of like a gel seat. But let's just hit a few bumps on purpose. No one behind me is there, so I can make some uh, what would look like interesting manoeuvres. Try and hit a few bumps and just see, yeah, here's some drains, right? It just doesn't jar your back at all. It's really, really nice. So the suspension is great. I mean, it's a bit wet, so I can't push it really hard. And we're in, it's still in the 30s, so I need to be careful. Um, but so far, it's just feeling really, really nice. And we're on 17-inch rims as well, cast alloy wheels. They do actually do this bike with spoke rims as well, which uh, is slightly different variant, but I'm on the one with cast, cast rims. And um, it feels very flickable. And it feels super comfortable as well. So obviously I talked about the comfort in the seat, but also the handlebar position. I've got a slight canter forward. Not much though, just enough. And then the handlebars come out, so they're just perfectly in reach. And I think Motor Marini have done something really nice, that they've made a bike that's super, uh, super accessible. You know, I just got on this bike, never ridden it before, never, to be honest, never even seen one before, and I'm having fun riding it, and yeah, okay, I'm familiar with the engine, but everything else just works, like ergonomically, it's very comfortable. Um, my knees have got, say, a just over 90 degree bend, but it's, it's perfectly comfortable. I'm on an 810 millimeter seat, so what we'll do, we'll do a little real-world test here. I'm going to pull over, just stop. Let's just drop down through the gears. Oh, yeah, I've pulled over on purpose on, a, on an incline just to see what it's like to put my feet down. And you can see that I'm really able to touch both sides uh, firmly down. Um, I'm 5'11 with 31-inch inside leg, so for me, I can, I can put down most bikes. Let's just put the visor up so you can hear the engine as well. Um, but I can put my feet down on most bikes. Uh, this is particularly easy. Um, it actually feels like a, like a uh, smaller height than 810 for the seat suggests. Um, but that, that's great actually. So it means anyone, you know, shorter riders, newer riders, anyone who likes to put both feet down, which to be honest is actually a lot of people. A lot of people like to have both feet flat on the floor. Um, I've, this bike, I mean, look, it's just perfect. I'm even on a slope. Um, the bike weighs 200 kg on the nose. It, ha it handles its weight really well, and the weight's low down, and just really easy to, to move around. You know, can even push backwards. Yeah, because it's so low, and my feet are flat, I can even push this bike backwards up a hill. I mean, check that out. <laughs> These are the tests no one else does. <laughs> but look, I can sort of waddle this bike backwards up a slope on a camber. Um, and give you guys a nice view of the Malvern Hills at the same time. Right, okay, let's make more progress. <laughs> wow! <laughs> that was good fun actually. Give it that. This bike is so much fun. <laughs> I tell you what, second gear is a bit of a ripper, isn't it? <laughs> My actual bike that I ride is, is 471cc, this is a twin. 
Um, so for me, it feels like being on a, uh, a, a Harley. We've got so much, <laughs> so much talk. <laughs> but it reminds me of my old bike, which I deeply loved. So, so yeah, I love a 650 single. Really, really nice. 650 single. I'm thinking of a BSA. 650 twin. I do love a 650 single as well. And we've got Brembo's uh, at both ends, and we've got dual discs up front. So I will test the brakes on this uh, on this incline. I'll be a little bit careful because it's wet and the road's a bit mucky, but yeah, that was pretty good. Just rolling down this hill now, and yeah. I know Brembo's are a brand, and you know people are a little bit snobby about them. But every bike I've ridden with Brembo's just has has great um, stopping power, and it's quite progressive as well. Like you can squeeze it, and it comes on softly. It doesn't sort of snatch. Uh, so I quite like that. Okay, we're going to stop down here and I'm going to get off the bike and we'll do a little bit of a walk around and show you guys the bike itself because we're next to a river, it's quite a picturesque little spot. As you can see guys, look, maneuverability, really easy, I did that like I was asleep. And that's a really good trait to have in the bike actually. See if I can access this little riverside spot. All right, guys. So we're now off the bike. Let's have a look. Uh, first thing, which is very uh, nice and pleasing to the eye, is this sort of uh, sort of duck beak rear or beaver tail. We could call it the beaver tail rear end. And it's quite reminiscent of the Triumph Trident, um, with the sort of wide um, but sort of slender. Uh, rear there and you've got a very small integrated rear brake light which is really really nice. Indicators are located down here which is kind of a this thing here is a appliance device. Uh, you have to have a piece of the motorcycle that extends beyond the rear wheel. Um, that's regulations unfortunately because these these things don't actually look uh, as good as it probably would if this wasn't here. Um, we've got a, a K, KYB, I think it is, a rear shock, adjustable for preload. I mean, that probably doesn't matter to most people who would buy this bike. One of the cool things about it is it's offset, which I think adds a more premium feel. Uh, the original ER6, which I rode, had an offset rear shock, and it kind of displays the displays the, uh, the shock as a feature of the bike, rather than just a kind of a component that's uh, functional. Uh, we've got rubber inserts on the pegs, which I quite like. Um, Obviously, it actually dampens the vibration as well. Not that you have that much on a twin, but it, every little helps. Here we've got the 650 lump, um, all in black, uh, obviously styled with Moto Marini. And this is quite nice, the logo it says Moto and then Marini, um, which is machined into the cover. We have talked about engine covers before <laughs> extensively on other motorcycles. This is a good one. Um, and then you've got this plate here that says six and a half. Now the tank, I didn't mention this, but the tank is actually a 16 litre tank. That will probably get you quite good range on this bike. If you think a twin, you're probably going to be in the 50s miles per gallon on this, depending how you ride. 16 litres, so you're probably going to be looking at almost 180, uh, maybe a 200 mile range. They do it in a red, uh, I think a black, white, on the bike which has the, the cast wheels. And then there's a different variant that's got wire spoke wheels. Got 17s either side, uh, which gives the bike nice flickable handling. Uh, the, you've got Pirellis on there. For me in this weather, they felt, they felt fine. Let's move around now um, to the front of the bike. So you've got nice downpipes uh, on display. Um, the other nice thing about Nakeds is that you can usually always access the oil filter um, very easily. So to drop the oil on this, it's just sump plug and then whip that oil filter off. Which is, which is very handy and saves removing all the fairings and, and gubbins. As I mentioned before, we got these big Brembo discs up front uh, with the calipers there. Uh, plenty of stopping power for a, for a bike with this power output. And um, 
yeah, it just it just all kind of looks nice proportionally, doesn't it? Curved radiator there, uh, which again is quite nice stylistically. They haven't just slapped on a big flat alloy radiator. You've got a, a nice curve which fits the lines of the bike. And then you've got here um, this radiator shroud, which again is quite a nice piece. Um, looking at the front of the bike, uh, we've got again preload adjustable forks. So this is quite a nice thing to have on, on a bike uh, in this kind of class and category, the adjustable uh, forks at the front. And then here, which is a nice feature, it's got MM on the, the bottom of the fork here for Moto Marini. That's quite nice. Right, next thing I'm going to do is bring the camera over to show you some of the features up close. Okay, so there we've got the rear wheel coming across. That nice plate, that's a six and a half offset, offset rear shock. Motor Marini there on the engine cover. And coming up just to show you the 16 litre tank. And then we've got nice filler cap. Easy to access, you don't have to fiddle or clip or, you know, people have a thing about filler caps on bikes. That one looks quite straightforward. Let's look at the rider's point of view. So you've got actually Moto Marini branded grips, which is nice. And then one of the things which I was going to say when I'm actually on the bike is that the controls are actually really quality feeling, like as a reassuring click there when you do that. Let's move over to the other side to show you the seat. Come back up here. How's it looking? Yeah, let's just show you this. So, again, you can probably hear that click on the audio. It's just really, really reassuring and, and sort of quality feeling. And then this is a little push in to turn your high beam and dip beam. These controls here are for the TFT. Let's show you the TFT. So that's one of the best features of this bike. So I'll sound in the shade so you can see it. Let's initialize the bike. And then what you see is, see that gorgeous Moto Marini? Six and a half. And then look at the interface there. Just cancel the indicator. Let's just see if I can scroll through. Oh, there's a trip. Oh, I've got music, phone calls, settings. Let's go into settings. Bike info, connect, display, system. View, brightness. Oh, units, so all the usual stuff really. Let's check bike info. Oh, that's pretty cool. Front tyre pressure monitoring, rear tyre pressure monitoring, battery, temperature, miles to the service. All very useful stuff. Let's go back. I don't think that's too overcomplicated. Um, if you know what I mean. It's just got everything you need. It's a nice size. And this is this curve in it is also really nice. See that? Curve is a nice feature, it just sets off the bike really nicely. There's the handlebars. Okay, let's come down to the front, and here we've got a nice feature. You've got LEDs there uh, for the indicators, but in the middle we've got a daytime running light, which looks superb. But let's let's change the settings because what you can do, which I think is over here. Ah, here it is. Yeah, I can switch daytime running light off. With the bike on, the switch turns daytime running light and dipped beam, high beam dipped beam. So you've got quite a lot of flexibility with the lighting, which you want to have on or off. As I'm here and the engine's running, I'll just do a quick blip. I'm not going to rev it too much, so I don't want to be too antisocial. But overall, let's just stand back. It's a very nice looking motorcycle. Alright guys, we're going to get back on the road and let you know some more thoughts when we're back in the saddle.
Right, we're back on the road with the Moto Marini six and a half. So now we're going to head on to some faster roads. We're going to head on to the A44 and just see what the bike's like. Um, I've got a couple of corrections to make. It's actually an 18 inch front uh, wheel and a 17 inch rear. I previously said there were two 17s, so I had marks for me there for getting things wrong. Okay, let's nip out here. Again, pulling away from junctions. Oh, wow! That's so much fun! Look at that! Actually, when you rev to 7, which is quite high on a parallel twin, um, it flashes to let you know to change gear. That's a really cool thing. So I'm in fourth now and there's loads of pull. You guys are probably getting some wind noise, so I'm going to slow down a bit, but it's really impressive. I showed, I showed you the switch gear previously, but on the bike, so that's just really accessible. And I've actually got really thick winter gloves on today, because I'm a bit of a girl, really, and I get cold hands, so no offence to women out there, but I, uh, it takes me about until May to get summer gloves on. Uh, so. With these thick winter gloves, I'll just concentrate a little bit as we go around this bend. With these thick gloves on, everything is really accessible. Sorry, I actually lost my concentration a little bit. I'm just having fun on the bike. Right, we've got a sweeping bend here. So I'll drop down into third. Now round we go, not too much because the road's wet. That is lovely. It's just very predictable in the corner. Now this band actually sharpens midway through, so you've got to be careful on this one, but there we go. Right, I'm in third, so I'm gonna try and do an overtake. So real real world situation, I'm coming up to a straight. Check my mirrors. Nobody's there. Okay, go for it. It's telling me to change up. Nice change. Done. And that's the kind of performance that you really benefit from on a road ride. That's really, really enjoyable. I'm sorry guys for the wind noise. Um, obviously we're on a naked. And here I'm gonna enjoy these bends as well. Got my camera bag on this, hanging off the side of me. <laughs> So that doesn't catch on a lot of these wing mirror or something. <laughs> Round we go. I wish this was dry to push on a little bit more, but listen to the engine as well, it's great fun. This is this road is so much fun. I forgot how much fun this road is. I gotta just pop into this fuel station. Easy to get into neutral as well, that's handy. Hello. Yeah, hi. Alright, let's talk about the price of this motorcycle. So price is always a consideration, isn't it, whenever you're looking to buy anything. And the good news is that the Moto Marini 6.5 Street comes in at 6,000, it begins with a 6, which is amazing, isn't it? 6,699 pounds, um, which is actually quite incredible given you've got 6,490cc parallel twin, 55 newton meters of torque, premium suspension components with preload adjustability here on the front forks, Brembo brakes, a very nice TFT, and you've got adjustable levers, you've got nice kind of style features, it's, it's an appealing package, isn't it? The back of the bike looks really good. Um, the instrument con uh, controls here have quite a nice uh, quality feel to them. Wow. This bike, man. Oh, <laughs> look at this road! And listen to that parallel twin. I've got to stop speeding up because it makes too much wind noise. 
It's all going to wind noise, it's not pushing too, me too much in the chest. Uh, I'm going 55 miles an hour here. Just blipping it around in, uh, in third. Which is hilarious fun. But yeah, you're at, uh, you're at 6,700 pounds for this bike, which is crazy. It's crazy. And I do like a bike that's a good value proposition. It's okay having probably one of the best bikes in the world, the Multistrada V4S Rally or something like that, but you pay 26 grand for it. And this is very accessible, both in riding style but also in price. There's a couple of things I don't like about it. Um, the exhaust could be nicer, that plastic shroud on the back of it isn't great. Um, but, you know, on my, my Kawasaki ER6, I had an Acropovic system on there, which really transformed the look of the bike, transformed the sound as well. So there are things you can do with the exhaust. Um, the TFT is a particular highlight. I'm trying to find things which I could pick at. Oh, perhaps the fact these cables and wires, they're not particularly rooted that tidily. But I'll show you here when we slow down. You see, if you look around my phone holder, they kind of cover the TFT a little bit looks a little bit like an afterthought. But obviously this bike costs six and a half grand, uh, or 6,700, under seven grand. So, and listen to the engine. There's a world of difference between a uh, sort of 450, 500cc and a 650. To me, I think there's so much more torque. This road is really, really nice. But going back to the value proposition, yeah, I mean, you're getting so much bike for the money, and I think that means a lot these days, um, especially with the co cost of living crisis and all that. People, Some people want one motorbike, they want it to be affordable, and, and this kind of fits that bill, really. Um, you can do a lot of stuff with one bike. You can commute, go for Sunday rides. It looks pretty good. Um, let's address the question that people seem to care about a lot, is where the bike was made. Um, this bike's designed in Italy and made in China, which some people won't like, but uh, you know, it doesn't bother me. I've had a few Chinese bikes, so I actually think they're probably as good as, if not better, than some brands which are uh, established here in Europe. Um, the kind of age old thing that Chinese bikes are. Uh, sort of throw away and you know uh, poor quality is a bit outdated now it really is a bit outdated oh, man this bike's fun oh here's some bumps to test the suspension I can still see quite clearly in the mirrors as well, even when I'm picking up a bit of speed. Look up here. Yep, yep, it's fast. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad it's dried out. <laughs> this is awesome. If you do want something a bit faster, um, then Moto Marini are actually bringing out 1200. They're bringing back the 1200. So that bike, uh, I would be interested in seeing as well. Uh, so that'll have, uh, you know, a lot of poke. <laughs> you know, this I feel that this has got more than enough for road speeds, but that will be uh, that'll be something else. All right, guys, as we trundle down this little idyllic road, um, I'm going to say thanks a lot. We're going to end the video there. Thank you to Midwest Moto for lending me this wonderful Moto Marini today. As I mentioned in, in the intro, Midwest are really, really kind of stylish and cool heritage motorcycle dealership near Southport in the West Midlands. 
Um, got BSA, got Motor Marini, got Fantec, um, they got Indian motorcycle. So go and have a look. I mean, it is it is pretty. It's a fun place just to hang out, even if you're not going to uh, you're not going to buy a motorcycle. But thanks them for lending me this bike. Uh, I do appreciate that. You know, it's uh, it's it's a nice thing for them to do to to lend someone uh, such as myself a bike. Uh, it's the first first dealer that's uh, been good enough to do so. So you know that that's a nice uh, a nice gesture on their part. I appreciate it. And also, guys, thanks a lot for watching. Um, you know, you guys just stuck with me uh, over the winter. We haven't had that much motorcycle content, so you know, thanks a lot for uh, sticking with the channel and tuning in. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I think Motor Marine is a very cool brand. This is definitely a real strong contender for a sort of very well priced parallel twin, do everything motorcycle, very stylish. Um, yeah. So let me know what you think of it, and yeah, just I'll be interested to see what the comments say on this one. I can't find much fault, but maybe I'm missing something, so let me know what you think. Alright guys, well enjoy yourselves, um, and stay shiny side up. Alright, catch you on the next one.